Hi guys, I'm back again with some more stories for you today. Let's go to the first one, about OP, who wants to use the trust fund set up by her late grandfather for her education, but her parents are furious and blames her for stealing it from her siblings. But at the end, OP finds out the true reason they don't want her to touch the trust fund. Listen to the story to find out the reason, and of course to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I, 26 female, am the third of five siblings. The others are 32 male, 29 female, 23 female, and 20 male. Our mother has a PhD, our father has an MS, my oldest brother has a PhD, and my youngest sister is entering grad school. My older sister did not attend grad school, and my younger brother did not attend college. Our maternal grandfather, who died before I was born, was very wealthy and never went to college. He left a lump sum in trust to be used for the education of my parents' kids. I worked my butt off and attended both undergrad and grad school on scholarship, so I have never touched these funds. I was recently accepted into my dream PhD program with an advisor I'd idolized. I announced this to my parents and siblings, and immediately the text started. Accusing me of showing off, making my siblings feel bad, of getting a pointless extra degree just to be obnoxious. That's a quote from 32 Mail. I did an MAGD program, but decided I did not want to be an attorney after graduation, which is what they're basing the extra idea on. My whole family is mad because they think I'm stealing the money from 29 female and 20 male if they ever decide to go back to school. I don't think I'm the a-hole because this is literally the first time I've touched these funds. My younger sister halfway agrees, but everyone else is mad. Am I the a-hole? Edit. To answer a few reoccurring questions. Why did 20 male not go to college? He had medical issues that are since resolved and will be likely starting once the global medical situation is in a better place. Your family is probably stealing from it, misappropriating funds. The trustee is not a family member. Why didn't your grandfather make five trusts equally divide the money? Only my older siblings had been born when he died. What is your family's issue? My family feels that because I have a professional degree and the PhD and masters are in a non-STEM field, pursuing the PhD would be stupid and pointless. Why didn't you check how much was left before this? I know it isn't an excuse, but up until now, how much was in the trust had no bearing on my life because my education was paid for by outside scholarships. What happens to the money if it isn't all used? It passes to any children of me or my siblings. OP is using the money for what Grandpa intended, so OP is honoring his wishes. If OP's passion is a PhD in a field that pays crap, that's OP's choice, not theirs. OP's parents are preventing OP from getting a degree because of what? It would make OP's siblings feel bad? They think it's pointless. It doesn't matter what they think about this degree. OP should go get it. Tara Love XO says, It's clearly not about the money. They sound jealous. I Drow One says, Not the a-hole, and people need to write their wills better. Even though one child was born when it was written, it should have been phrased to say the money would be divided equally between whatever children were there, and anyone who contested it would lose their share. People love to troll, even from beyond the grave. Update. I was pretty hesitant to post this because my entire life has been turned upside down since I initially posted. I confronted my parents at a family meal last weekend. They usually have at least a few of the siblings over for dinner. Because my older sister and her family weren't there, I figured it was okay to bring up to my parents and older brother. I don't want to risk my nieces dealing with a family fight, especially about money that would affect them someday. After a lot of stonewalling on the part of my parents and tears from my mom, my brother basically says, you're not even my actual sister. This was news to me. The truth came out pretty quickly from here. Apparently, my mother had an affair that resulted in me. One of the conditions my father had for them to stay married was that I never get anything meant for their real kids. They couldn't bar me from the trust due to how the paperwork was written, but they could social engineer me away from using the money. My older brother figured this out when he was a teen by putting the pieces together from the arguments he heard as a child. I'm absolutely sick over it. I'm sick that my father never loved me or thought of me as his. I'm sick that my mother is willing to sacrifice me for her marriage. I'm sick that my brother never said anything to me and apparently shared my father's views. The vaguely good news is that the other three siblings are absolutely disgusted by this. My younger sister overheard the discussion and immediately filled our sister and brother in 
and are on my side against our parents and brother. It's a whole ducking mess. I honestly don't even know what I'm going to do from here. I'm not processing this well. Having my sisters and younger brother on my side helps, but honestly, there are no winners here. Just a lot of awfulness. My 33 female, late husband, before he got sick, bought a very old house that he wanted to fix up. It apparently used to be some old money family's hunting lodge. At least that is what the realtor said, that had fallen into despair. His intention was never to use the house as a primary residence. His justification for the purchase was that he had grown up poor, and after he had started making a lot of money, he had for the past few decades never spent much of it on luxuries for him or his family. He did not wear expensive clothes or drive expensive cars. His money only ever went to safe investments or to new businesses he was able to make a success. So this was his one purchase that he wanted to make just because he could. Unlike our other homes that came in pristine condition, this home was clearly falling apart. During our six-year marriage, I've had an okay relationship with one of his daughters. However, his other daughter has always been difficult, disliked how tight-fisted her dad was towards her mom and family, had a horrible boyfriend who already had five children with two other women by the time he was 32, but believed that after having her four-year-old daughter that he would propose instead of leaving her, like he did. After the boyfriend left her, my husband and I let her live in the house rent-free. Thought she was supposed to start paying rent, but my husband got sick and they never communicated well. But during the year she was in the house, it continued to deteriorate quickly. After my husband died, his assets were divided between me, his nephew, and the rest in a trust for our son, four male. I told his daughter that she had to start paying $900 a month in exchange for her living in two adjoining rooms upstairs and being able to use the kitchen. She said that was too hard and that she was a single mom. She also got mad when I said that her boyfriend is around spending money on dates, but somehow cannot send support. After a week of contact, I handed it over to my lawyers who went through all the steps to give proper notice and then file for eviction. However, evictions take a long time in our state. It's been four months and it's clear my stepdaughter wants to fight it because she has no plan and below average credit. I have somebody who goes to the common area to do basic cleanup and my stepdaughter claims depression has made her unable to clean. We always knew the house was falling apart, but after getting somebody to inspect it, my agents told me that this place could be easily condemned and we wouldn't have to wait for a proper eviction. So now my stepdaughter and her kid is being forced out immediately and she is furious and says she could have made do and I was leaving her homeless. Am I the a-hole for going a legally permissible route and getting the house condemned? It always needed to be rehabbed, but now I'm rid of a problematic tenant. It sounds like there's a lot of missing info regarding why his daughters were left out of his will, but his nephew was included. But from the info we have, it looks like OP's goal is to make her stepdaughter and child homeless, while OP gets all of her father's assets. Also, OP is definitely in the wrong for wanting to charge her rent for a property that could be condemned. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Dog Drawn says, So your late husband, my apologies for your loss, married someone his daughter's age after having raised his daughters in a toxic family. What the duck does tight-fisted mean? bought a house near condemnation and allowed his daughter to live there without fixing it up, without a clear lease or agreement, and then in his will didn't leave his previous daughters anything, but left something for his nephew? I'm hesitant to say you're an a-hole, but your husband sure as duck sounds like one, and you're being a jerk in that you expect payment for a house that sounds like it could have been condemned from your husband's kid. This sounds messy. I don't envy your position, but yeah, you kinda look like you suck here. Risha Bree says, you're the a-hole. Putting aside everything else, going from charging $0 to charging $900 a month for two rooms that should be condemned and access to a kitchen? Is there a bathroom included in that? Are there other people living in the house? And that's why she doesn't have full access to the whole place? If there are, what are they paying? And I'm assuming you're kicking them out too with your nasty little plan. And why are you taunting her about her ex-boyfriend spending money? It has absolutely nothing to do with anything for as long as he's not paying child support. So the only reason I can think of is to be as cruel as humanly possible. My husband, 35 male, and I, 30 female, are married with two amazing sons, aged four and two. He is an amazing husband and father. We are equally involved in child care, and he is more the primary caregiver than I am, up until recently at least. Nine months ago, our lives were totally turned upside down when his ex got in contact with him and told him that he had a nine-year-old daughter. 
He was absolutely devastated to find out that he had a daughter he'd never known about. Like, it crushed him. He and his ex had a very toxic relationship and a really rough breakup, and up until recently, had told her daughter and her family and friends that my husband had abandoned her upon learning she was pregnant. Being a father is the thing he values most, and was something he'd always deeply wanted, and there's no scenario where he would have done that, and he's livid. His daughter is also furious with her mom, and for good reason. Since then, we've gotten very involved in her life. At first, it started with visits after the paternity test, phone calls, then her staying a few weekends, until my husband officially asked for custody, and his ex basically gave us 50-50. It was finalized a month ago. I think honestly she'd give us more if she could. I'm pretty sure she reached out to us because her mom passed away, and her dad had dementia, and she needed someone to raise her daughter, since from the sounds of it, her parents were just doing it. My stepdaughter is an incredibly sweet and lovely girl, who is amazing with her little brothers, but she is very emotional, very needy, and struggling at school, all of which is incredibly understandable, and my husband is going above and beyond to try and take care of her in every possible way. They've gotten extremely close, extremely fast. I know that both of them are really struggling with that lost time, and are both overcompensating and trying to make up for it, but it's affecting his parenting of our sons. He spends far more time on and with her, and I've had to pick up a ton of the slack in childcare, and the boys are starting to notice and ask about it. When it's our weeks, they spend a ton of time, just the two of them, going out and doing things. Our oldest son cried last time because he felt excluded, and my husband did feel bad, and promised that we'd do more as a whole family. But even on the weeks where we don't have her, he will drop everything to FaceTime her. I'm trying to still be understanding, but it's been a lot. And last night, when he went to FaceTime her and asked me to do bedtime instead, I told him he couldn't just neglect our sons because he has a long-lost daughter. He blew up at me, telling me I wasn't being fair, and it's not like it's going to be like this for forever, but right now he needs to show her he is there for her, and I need to just cut him some slack. He basically never gets angry, and has since apologized for yelling, but not for what he said, and has been pretty cold. I do feel pretty bad for telling him he was neglecting the boys, since I know he feels a ton of guilt for not being there for her, even though it's not his fault and I think that's likely where the blow-up came from. I just can't decide if I'm being an a-hole for being irritated at him. So, am I the a-hole here? I personally think that OP should tell him to his face it's not her that noticed, but the kids. OP didn't say anything until the kids noticed. The boys will continue to feel abandoned and neglected for their sudden sister and grow resentful, and if he responds by trying to back up on the sister and refocus on the boys, the girl will feel abandoned, as she's no longer getting the attention she's been used to since dad became part of her life, leading to resentment. Opie's husband is going to destroy all of his relationships. So, I think he should see a family therapist in this situation. And now let's hear the community's opinion. PSI Blaze says, No a-hole, except for his ex. This isn't a typical situation. This is something that should call for family counseling, especially as she integrates into your household. If he wants to do right by all of his kids, he'd get moving on that path now. Civil Butterfly says, I think this is a tough situation. The ex is definitely the a-hole in this situation. I do think it's important for him and his daughter to get to know each other. He should FaceTime her when she's at her mom's. They should be doing activities together, just the two of them. That said, he shouldn't be neglecting his sons or having them take the back seat. They also should get to know their sister. So there should be family time and family outings when she's there. And when she's not, he needs to give the sons special time too together and or separately, to make sure they know they aren't getting replaced. It's a rough situation that just requires patience, finesse, and lots of love. My big brother has been dating a girl for eight months. From the very beginning, the family got weird vibes. Example, she put on my wedding ring that was in my bathroom drawer and sent a Snapchat to her story that said she'd be next. She followed my brother once 45 minutes away while he dropped something off to our mom because she suspected he might be cheating. She texts all of us incessantly, saying she can't wait to be part of the family. For reference, my brother does not want children, and she already has three from her last two marriages. Three months ago, he started trying to end things. Oldest trick in the book, she stopped taking her birth control. They had a condom break, so he bought her plan B. They went on a trip, came back, he's unpacking his duffel bag a week later, and finds the plan B. She states she forgot to take it. Two weeks later, she finds out she's pregnant and texts a picture of the test to me saying, it's uncle time. For reference, my wife is also pregnant 
and I got confused and thought she was talking about our pregnancy. My brother had no idea she told me, and he asked her to get an A. She said it was too late for the pill A, not true, only seven weeks along, but that she was planning on getting an A when she went to see her parents in a nearby town. Goes to see her parents. He logs into his computer to see that she bought all sorts of dad Christmas gifts for him, as they share an Amazon account. He's freaking out, of course. Decides it's all too much and ends things with her. She tells him we, my side of the family, will never meet the baby if he doesn't stay with her and marry her. He feels awful. He's like abandoning a pregnant woman. I told him she knew his wishes, ignored them of her own personal gain, lied to his face. I told him he can be there for the child without enabling all of this from her. He's happy to co-parent and pay child support once the baby is here, but we made it clear she is not welcome ever. Just not sure what the right thing to do is. I'm bummed in a lot of ways, because this kid would be my kid's cousin and would be born the same month. If it wasn't for how off-kilter she seems, I'd love to have a relationship with the child as obviously this isn't the baby's fault. This wafer 1335 says, Oh lordy, not the a-hole. Just after the first paragraph, she sounds cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I think now is the time to start separating a relationship with her, the baby. She already has three kids. She won't be able to do it alone. He should definitely break up with her and run far, far away so he can enjoy a normal life. She will always try to use the baby as a weapon against him, unless he sets the boundaries now that he wants to help with the child, but not her. If he does not want anything to do with the child, that is his right as well. Cautious Job 8683 says, I recommend your brother ask for a DNA test, and if the kid is his, sue for full custody. She does not sound stable enough to parent a child properly. She sounds unstable enough to allow the child to bond with dad, then traumatize it by ripping it away and denying visitation. Careful Now says, There's a massive difference between abandoning a pregnant ex and refusing to have anything to do with her and the baby, and just splitting up because the relationship is no longer working. He can split up with her because he doesn't love her, doesn't see a future, feels manipulated and lied to, and still be there for the baby. If he suspects she's going to play nasty, I'd suggest he keeps everything in writing, all offers of help, requests to come to scans, etc., and maybe get some legal advice. But he can't stay with someone just because she's pregnant. It's not fair to anyone.